Hi everybody, this is the first half of our weekly recap going over what's happened in class, changes and uh, additions. So this is a Google document and it has a Google URL which is goo.gl slash gf capital A 640. You can go and find this on your own when you'd like and get to it more thoroughly but I'm going to zoom over it now. It's got a lot of things to talk about regarding regular news and recaps, forum postings, and responses to the course design. So news and recaps, we've had some team reassignments. I'm trying to make sure that students who I pair with people don't end up getting stuck because the person that they paired with isn't keeping up with the course or maybe responding well enough. A few students dropped earlier in the week. I had to move things around because of that. And then today when I look at grading, I see three students who've done nothing and two students who had a hard time. So I've made a couple more shifts. Um, hopefully the students who've done nothing will get in gear and we'll have to make some more shifts at the end of this week. But uh, here's a link to the new list. That's goo.gl slash w capital G P three capital S Z. And the good news is the pangolins are back. I happen to think pangolins are cool. Anyway, I sent an email earlier about the flat HTML sites and, uh, a lot of people are doing be the bee.com, which is okay because a lot of you are trying to develop websites that you're going to use to sell your web design services, but it's kind of boring. There's a bunch of other candidates here. Um, a friend of mine died and I made a, a website for him for his poetry. It's a pretty awful site and would love to have somebody else make something of it. Um, so if you're interested in that, I would be your client. There are two passive site client candidates, which means these are people who, if they like your site better than the one they have now, which is likely they will because I made their sites with Dreamweaver in 2005 with some students, then they get to take it from you. I don't know that they're going to be paying you anything, although they might throw you a few bucks, but at least they're friends of mine or cousins or people I know pretty well. Now the active site candidates are clients who actually want to give you feedback and direction to help you do your work. For those, it's okay with me if you pair up with your partner to do it because in return, they're going to expect that you're done with that site by the end of the semester. Uh, so it's a commitment for you. If you don't want to use that kind of active commitment but you still want to give it a try and make the site, that's fine too. And so those three are listed here. The What's WordPress video? Uh, if you're in the level one user category, then there's going to be a final exam that's based on it, so you really don't want to lose track of this information. You want to have watched it, you want to be able to get back to the slide presentation if you need to, and maybe even look at the slide notes and all those URLs are here. Grading policy, it's really not cool to be late. Um, I know that you work in full time, some people get sick, but we're doing different things every week. The things build on previous things, and if you drop out, your partners can't make much use of you. So uh, I really would be better off taking 50% of your grade off each week, um, but since we have to compromise, 20% off a grade if a thing is late. Um, that said, it was really, really important to me this week that you do the entry survey. So the grades this week right now are if you did the entry survey, you got 50. I'll, just, I'll explain that further on actually. But uh, reach out to me with a personal email if you know your work is going to be late, or on Sunday if you know it was, so I know that you understand how important it is to st stick with us. Okay, now I'm going to go deeply into the forum postings. For the introductions in student to student, I provide, provided a model, and then when uh, I think it was Carlton did his first response, I said, now that's exactly what I'm looking for. So based on that, I gave 50 points if your response was about the size of Carlton's or had that level of depth, 40 points if you did like three or four sentences, 25 points if you did two sentences and it was very, very minor, and zero, of course, if you didn't do an introduction. So some people did, got 50, some people got uh, 25s. Um, if you add the fact that if you did an entry survey, you got 50 points. If you didn't, you got a zero. You can imagine that a lot of students did very well this week. I gave extra points for people who answered questions, extra points for people who asked good questions that helped me fix the course in time for everybody else, and extra points for people who gave me course feedback. Uh, so some people got 105s, and uh, next week if they got a 95, that would average out to 100. So if you really care about grades so much, then that's how you win. Okay, talking about assignments, if you wait until Friday night, 
to do forum posts. It guarantees that you're not going to get people feeding back to you and you're not going to feed back to other people in a sort of timely way. That's why I say it's very important to check your email every day and that's why I wanted you to link your emails to your cell phones so you'd see what was coming in and see what you wanted to click on rather than to just go and get tired at the end of the day and feel like you have to stick stuff in. I don't give credit for forum postings that come in after the deadline. But students who are reading the form postings and want to get to know you will still care. So don't leave off. If you're sort of quiet and not really present on the forums, it's going to impact how much help you get and how much you get out of the course. Best practices. There's a section from the home page called forums and wikis. And those of you who clicked on that to expand and see the list of forums, so there was a course design talk forum where you could give me course feedback. So that was an automatic one or two points, well, mostly one for what you gave feedback on. Please make sure you find the forums and wikis thing and click on it. Know that if there's a problem with Google, like Hangouts, you might put something there. If there's a problem with WordPress, when we get there, you put something there. I want to have the feedback go in the right forum and not just use student to student as tech support. Student to student shouldn't be tech support now that we have other options. If the thing doesn't relate to any of the forum topics there, then put it in course feedback if you have to. I mean course design talk rather than student to student. Um, and if you are going to send me an email, or even if you're going to paste on the forums about the course instructions that you don't think are great, include the course instructions that you're talking about so we know how to interpret them. For example, uh, someone, I think it was Megan, wanted help on how you found a flat HTML site and she posted the instructions I'd given. So I was able to look at them and say, oh, yeah, they really do work, and then explain to her why. Oh, by the way, Corey, you're in a Linux class? That is so cool. Linux is open source, just like Moodle and uh, Drupal and Joomla and WordPress are. So I want to know about it. Could you do a forum post about your Linux class? And I'll be key to read, in, read about it and, and write. Sorry, I'm, uh, it's been a long day. It's 3.41. I've been on this since uh, 10 o'clock this morning. Anyway, so other good practices that I saw this week. Uh, somebody told a story, yeah, Jennifer told a story about the flux capacitor and it was related to the content and it was nice to read. So if you have a story from your past that's related to the content of the course, not about a big fish you caught, please do include it. It makes the forums more readable. Asking other people questions like saying, you know, hey Joel, uh, you know, I'm interested to know, uh, you know, what did you take last semester? It's okay to ask them questions, but have it be related to something that they wrote or related to something that you just wrote. Uh, you don't want to basically have one post in which you just say like one sentence and then ask somebody else a question just that's not apropos of anything because they're probably not going to respond. Encouraging other people is very helpful. If you see that somebody needs encouragement, please give it to them. But don't go overboard and spend a whole lot of time writing encouraging stuff. Basically, if there's a lot of extra verbiage on the forums and we're all having to read through because everybody gets them and everybody has to read through them, it tires everybody out. It takes us longer to do our work. Don't write stuff that doesn't have to be written. Um, I think there's a netiquette guidelines that asks that you think to yourself, is it necessary? Is it helpful? Is it kind? Things like that. So if you haven't read the netiquette link yet, please do. Maybe I'll provide that later on this document. Um, Here's some bad practices that I want you to stop. If you're writing a forum post from a cell phone, then I can understand why you're using text speak and not having capital letters and saying letter U in place of Y or U. But if you're writing from a, a, uh, your computer, and I can tell if you are because it doesn't say 12857.vtext.com, you know, the thing from the emails from your phone, full sentences, capital letters, write like a college student, okay? It's okay to use text speak if you're writing from a phone. Um, also, it's better not to make any replies than to make a reply that's like, I just want to signify that I was here so I get a grade. I'm not going to give you grade points. In fact, I'm going to take points off. Anybody who goes and does, hey, that's really cool, me too, question mark, you know, exclamation point, I'll, I'll take points off from, you, from your grade, so don't do that. Don't make us read more than we have to read. Um, and in general, don't go overboard on posting. There were a couple of people who made 15 posts this week. And I think many of the posts were incredibly helpful, and many of the posts made me really be excited to work with those students. But there's other people who will see their names and start going, oh, not more from them, it's too much. And it makes us have to read more. So gentle on the number of forum posts. If you really want to talk to somebody else, email them directly. Don't put it on the forum. Thanks.
Okay, now talking about the responses to course design. A lot of people said, gee, this course had a lot of new things very, very fast. That's not going to change. That's why if you're out sick for a week, it's really important for you to have a Google Hangout with your partner before and after to reconnect with them. I'll talk more about Hangouts later, but they're really the blood of the class because we're an online class, and if you're not getting to talk to people and see them, it's harder to feel engaged. Yeah, there were some glitches this week. I'm starting a full-time job while designing the course, and, and you know, I'm just I haven't been as good on checking up on things as I'd like to be. I'm going to provide a form later, uh, probably on this document, but definitely in a post where you can volunteer to be a link checker. Um, yes, you'll get some class participation grades, but more importantly, you're going to help the community. Um, I'll fix things as soon as they're broken. I'm glad that you know you can trust me on that. And I really appreciate how many people are looking out and helping me know when there's something that's not working, and I will fix it instantly. Um, somebody asked about, Melissa wanted to know where's the central location to have all the documents of the course. So I wrote about that here. I'm not going to describe it so much right now, except very briefly to say, the overview page has every link that you need for the week that you're in. If you can't remember what week something was in because you're not there, um, there's another thing called course activities and resources. And everything that's something that you've had to do is going to be there. So for example, for the last week, you'd find set your level, partner's sheet, entry level survey questionnaire, and what's WordPress, because those are the things that you had to go and submit, plus forms, of course. But if you can't find what you're looking for there, um, there is also uh, the forms, which if you search them, you can put in text and you'll find whatever's there, which is really, really cool. There is a forms and the, the, there's a thing called forms and wikis where all those forms are, not the student to student, but the other ones. And if you wanted to help make a wiki and put things that you think are important for all the students to know, I totally support that. In this form I'm going to send out later, you'll have a chance to uh, you know write something to I mean to say that you want to go and be a part of that. Um, wikis are very important for web developers. When you have a team, they want to have a central document where they're sharing stuff um, and. Uh, it's even if you if you haven't heard of wikis, it's because you haven't been a web developer before. So it's a good practice to get into. That said, there's so much information coming through on the fire hose of this class. Maintaining a wiki could be pretty exhausting. So it might be better to just rely on what's here. And if you can't find something that you need, sing out. All right. So hangouts. Hangouts are really valuable. Uh, they do work. If you see a message that says hangouts don't work for you. Just continue going through the process, but make sure that you're hanging out with another student's GCC Gmail account. They're kind of protected that way. You can't go out to the real world from a GCC account on a Hangout. Now, if you don't have a webcam, you can share your screen with a Hangout, which is really powerful. If you're having trouble, you share your screen with another student, with your partner who isn't there, and they can immediately see what you're doing wrong. If your partner doesn't know, reach out to your quad. If your quad doesn't know, just write a post and say, I want to have a hangout with somebody to teach me how to do this thing. Here's when I'm available. Can anybody do it for me? But if you do have a webcam, you get the face-to-face -face communication with your partners and your quads that help you feel connected to the class. And it helps you build a relationship that you'll keep after the class is over, which is part of what this is all about. There may be some people who write to a forum and say, Hey, I've got a little bit of money. I need somebody to help me make a site who wants to go and do that. And then you'll have working relationships that happen after the class. That might actually happen soon. Here's the process for what you need to do with Hangouts. It's right here on this list, so I won't go into it because I've written it a few times. All right, that's it for today. I'm going to put another half of this uh, presentation about what we're doing next week, but I'm going to take a break for now. Thanks a lot for listening.